We are now recording. Okay, welcome back everybody. Um, I think I have said hello to everyone, but I'm Linda and I want to welcome you back. Uh, this is just kind of an informal uh, video conference just to kind of learn something new and make a few new friends. And one of the things that I wanted to do was um, take advantage of being trapped in my house by setting up these conference calls so that I could see some of my friends. And a lot of them are starting new businesses. Uh, some of the people that I've invited, I've never met. And so I think that it'll keep it interesting with the different topics. Um, most of you know me through Instagram. So yes, a lot of this will be photography uh, related because that's what I'm interested in. And, but there's a few people that, you know, have other interests. And so I'm gonna try to shake it up to keep it interesting, not just for me, but for you guys too. So if you guys know anybody that um, would like to join, this is, you know, just have them contact me through my, um, my Instagram and, or if I give you the link, you can share that link. We are trying to be really careful because there's a lot of Zoom hacking that's going on. So if we see something weird tonight, Aaron's gonna shut it down and restart it. But that's just something that we are very aware of. Um, so coming up uh, next week, um, let's start with Aaron, who is basically the other moderator here. She is a coactive coach and she's gonna basically kind of give you some ideas, maybe to inspire you to maybe reimagine the way that you look at things. And um, I've known her for a couple of years now, and please do not miss this presentation. She, what she says will affect, will apply to you, whether you think you're, you need some extra help or just maybe some ideas, she'll make you think outside the box. That is next Wednesday. Um, Ashaya is coming up on the 22nd and Ashaya, we initially had thought she was going to do one on the healing power of um, herbs, spices. spices, but we kind of changed that because I think that um, her, her topic is going to be healing power of yoga and I'm more interested, I love cooking, but I'm kind of interested in the yoga part of it. So I was excited that she said, let's change it. So things are gonna flow and, and change as, you know, whatever the, the mood strikes us. So uh, I'm gonna try to post them on Instagram so you can kind of keep up. Um, Valerie Hoffman is a photographer that I met a year ago in Chicago, and we recently uh, palled around and took over Las Vegas a little bit and she is a landscape photographer but she does a little bit of everything real estate macro um, for the photographers in the group jump in because I use Lightroom exclusively and I jumped in on one of her zooms a couple of weeks ago and she was hitting buttons I'm like what what I, that button's been there I didn't know what it did so she's going to be able to offer you some tips on some editing um, I talked to Robert McGee last night, I think, the night before last. Robert, you'll know him as Roaming Camera on Instagram. He is one of the Instagram Texas uh, week, I think he's, I don't know what day he, he posts, but he's one of their hosts. And Robert is a freelance uh, travel photographer. He basically travels and takes photos of hotels and resorts, and, and that's how he makes his bread and butter. You'll know him by Instagram Texas by cow pictures. I would have had no, I had no idea he did hotel work. Uh, one of the things that he also does is food photography. So he's gonna cover those, um, those topics. And so that should be kind of fun. So those are coming up. There's a few other people that I've kind of gone on the, um, on the burner for future um, presentations. In fact, Dirk is standing, sitting right there probably wondering how is she going to get me in this, but I'm going to get you in here somehow, Dirk. You're going to perform for us. But anyway, uh, so Karen Riley, I have known her for almost 25 years. It's 24, but you rounded up, it's 25. And she is one of my core people that when I have stuff I can't figure out, or if I have an idea, she is one of the people that I pester and go, can you please help me? And she always has a solution for me. And a lot of times it's, talking me down or talking me through something, but she is a problem solver. 
her background, she has an art, I'm gonna get in trouble with this, but she's a, uh, she has an art design um, degree. And I met her when she was an accountant. That's what she did for a living. So to be an accountant and an artist, putting those two together, she's very successful at it. She is a full-time mom, and she currently is a full-time uh, teacher. She teaches art at a private elementary school here in Austin. And when Karen had her first baby, she said she was going to homeschool. And I, I didn't know what that was. I had no idea what that was. And she's one of the first people that I knew that did it. And 14 years later, I see the success she's had with it. And I, I see what her three children um, how they benefited from it. So if you're not stuck home with kids, maybe this won't apply to you, but um, feel free to give her some feedback on her presentation because I don't think this is going to be the, the last one that she does. So she's going to discuss um, three concepts that can help your family be, be successful during these very long days at home. Um, basically how to order your day, how to add variety, and, and how to help those kids take ownership of their time. So with that, I'm gonna pass you on to Karen. And like uh, Aaron said, we're going to mute you guys. So if you have any questions, uh, you can type them up in the, um, the chat section and we'll come back at the end of Karen's presentation and we'll go through any that you have. And I would encourage you that, ask her questions. Here, this is good practice for her. So thank you all for joining us and Karen, it's yours. Thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to start with, um, I, I'm not an expert at this, but I have learned some tricks over the years. And what's interesting about my three children is they all three learn differently. And they all three have three different times of the day where they are optimal learners. So I have a super early riser at like 5 a.m. And I have like a, the mid-morning risers. And then I have when my daughter, my middle daughter is, um, she is in her prime at eight, from 8 p.m. to like 11 p.m. So uh, all my children were not the same. So I had to try all these different tricks and um, things to help them. Um, that being said, I want to just say that my heart goes out to all the parents that are trying to do this, um, not being experienced, maybe not getting the help because the teachers are scrambling to, to try and give y'all help. and um, and having to cook and clean and just stay in the same house um, for long, long periods of time um, with the same people. And so um, I just wanted you to know that I know this is not easy. And so if anything I say helps you at all, I, I'm just thrilled about that. Um, I also wanted to tell you that um, some of these things work for my family. Some of them are tricks from other families and um, they're not all going to work for your family. And so um, take one or two and try them out and then if they don't work just you know discard them and then try something new so um, my motto with um, homeschooling and um, even just being with my children or doing chores or whatever is always been hey if we have to do this we might as well have fun and so um, we have tried to have fun so let me show you my presentation so that you guys can get um, a better idea let's see share your screen yeah i'm trying to give me just a second here we go good work and hang on just let me see if i can pull this out of the way oh here we go okay so um all right Let's start with ordering your day. We're gonna, we're gonna just talk about three things. There are tons of things to do. Um, ordering your day, create variety, and let the kids take ownership. Um, the thing uh, that I realized, and I am guilty of not always doing it, but I pay the consequences the next day, is to just take 15 to 30 minutes on a Sunday evening or before the school day and figure out like what can your kids do on your own what do they need help doing? Um, and then I make a list for each one. And I'll show you one of my sample lists in just a minute. Um, you can even make them for your tiny kids. My son, when he was in first grade, was like, just tell me what I need to do to get done. And I was like, oh, you want a list? Oh, I can do that. So once he got a list, 
Um, he was so excited. So, cause then he could scratch it off and then he knew when I'm done with all this stuff, I may go out and play. So for some kids, if they don't have, even if you just tell them if they're really tiny, um, if they can just know like this is not going to go on forever and ever, um, that um, it, it just makes them feel like, oh, I can do this for a few minutes. And um, they just don't feel like it's going to go on for eternity. Um, let's see. Let me show you guys. Um, let me show you guys a sample spreadsheet that I prepared. This is just, this is not an actual um, spreadsheet. It's just a sample of what I would have made for my kids when they were probably in middle school. So this is probably closer to middle school. Um, so you put your child's name because you're going to want one for each of your kids. Um, you put the date. This is like a single day. So this is like in the morning, you hand this to them with their assignments and their books. I put all the books in a box. I'll show you a picture in just a minute. A box or keep them in their backpack or some area in a basket so that all the books and the assignments go in that and it stays organized and they're not all over the house and they don't get intermingled with other kids. So all the purple stuff is what Sue has to do. And then she knows that she has to turn in certain things like her grammar, reading and writing to her parents, whether it's her mom or dad. Cause I know some moms do, you know, math and science and some dads do literature and um, foreign language. So sometimes parents split the, the, the role. I've usually done most of it. My husband does a tiny bit. He has his own business and so he works a lot. Um, but then at the bottom, you can see where Sue knows that, oh, I need to save these things for when mom has a time slot for me to work with me or dad has a time slot for me. And so we kind of organize that. And I'll show you for an older kid, this is what a weekly checklist would look like. So especially when you're staying at home and if my kids right now are getting assignments for the whole week. And so their teacher said, hey, you have three memory work assignments. If you want to do them all Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and get them done, you can get them done. So that's a good way for me to show, oh, okay, we've done everything the teachers asked us and you can check it off and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. So I, I do like the week for older kids because they already have a more detailed list probably coming from their teacher. Um, if it's tiny kids, um, you would maybe want to give them a daily list and a weekly list, uh, or maybe you keep track of the weekly list. So those kind of things are the things that you kind of work out, like, does this work for my family or not? So the one thing I would recommend highly is to keep a template so that you can just pop those in every week or every night, um, and then you have them already set up. Um, so those are some samples, and I can always, you can always contact me and get some samples from me. I'll be glad to give you some. Um, okay. So we also, um, one of the things that I think a lot of people have not necessarily um, done with their kids are chores. Um, and now, like maybe your, your housekeeper isn't coming or y'all are all at home a lot more and so there's stuff everywhere. And so um, we have chores now, all of my kids. So I have um, a college age son and a high school daughter and a middle school daughter. And so that's a wide range. And so we just have a chore list. So sometimes I'll put out a chore list and I'll say, these are the things that need to get done today. And we draw straws and whoever gets, you know, closest to the number goes first and they choose one thing. And then we just go down the list and then the next person goes the next person. And then my, you know, the person that was first goes again. And so everybody feels like, okay, you didn't get all the great, the, you know, the chores that you want to get. And, um, and I got, I, I, we each got to pick something. It's kind of like um, choosing sides with, you get to choose one and I get to choose one. Um, the other idea that we've done before is we zone the house. And so I say, um, okay, so-and-so is in charge of the living room. So, you know, my daughter is in charge of the living room. My son is in charge of the kitchen for a day. And then we switch. Then he's in charge of the living room. She's in charge. So you can do it that way too. And you have to pick up other people's stuff. I'm sorry. Like, I'm not going to, we're not going to argue over whose stuff it is because we're stuck in this house together. My favorite one though, especially when my kids are small, is we would set the timer for 15 minutes and we would just go, just pick up everything you can find and put it away. And they love that. My son, if you made a game out of it and it was a competition, he was all over it. That kid worked harder than any kid I've ever known if you called it a game. And he thought he was going to get points, even if they were fake points, it didn't matter to him. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, so think about the timer thing, especially if your kids are a little younger, but even if they're older, like my, my kids will still do that for 15 minutes. They'll go out. They've been pulling weeds 15 minutes a day and they're all like, 
isn't that fun? I'm like, I know, but it's 15 minutes. So it's no big deal. Let's go. And so they will do that. Um, the other thing that's really interesting is special projects. So you can take one of your junk drawers or your, one of your plastic container drawers and have them sort through it. And um, it is, this is an awesome skill um, for small children to be able to match things and organize things. And so you're, you're actually getting something nicer. And what I notice about when they actually organize the junk drawer is that they tend to keep it cleaner longer. And so I, I definitely appreciate that. Anytime that they invest in it a little bit, that they, they're willing to keep it a lot cleaner and nicer for the next you know week or so. Um, and then the pulling weeds. We have been, this has taken over our yard. We just got some new grass and we realized it's killing the grass that we had before. And so my daughter, my two daughters helped put down the grass and say like, oh no, we're going to help pull weeds because we don't want to do this ever, ever again. So um, pulling weeds, but make sure they know what the weeds are. I have a, I was listening to a story one time and she sent, uh, the mom sent her kids out to pull weeds and they all came back and they had a bag of stuff, but she was like, she realized they didn't know which were the weeds and which weren't. So be clear about that when you do that. Um, okay, so schoolwork. Um, I, we have, we, I happen to have, there's a picture over here. There's a, I have a box right now, but I've had nice baskets before. Just use what you have. And um, people, you know, are rearranging furniture in these situations. So use their desk if they have one at home. You can use the kitchen table. A lot of people that homeschool use the kitchen table, but it's really important that the books aren't there all the time because it feels like to the kids that schoolwork never goes away. So have a time where, hey, we get out the books, but when it's done, you put it back in the box. It's all neat and organ fairly organized and you can put them away. Um, then think about the things that you can do together as a family. So I used to do a read aloud. Um, sometimes it was history and I would read aloud to my whole crew at lunch. I would just down a shake really quick or eat a bar and um, I would read to them at lunch. Sometimes you can do projects together. My kids always, always love, and they're, they're three, uh, three years apart in school, all of them. And so, um, but we always did science projects together if we had time. We did um, art projects together. Like, you know, my youngest would do her version of the oldest. And so those kind of things, think about what y'all can do together. Um, uh, we we lot, listen to a lot of audiobooks too. And so I tried to pick something that was not too, too young for my son, but not too, too old for my youngest daughter and we would listen to something together that was just fun, just for fun. Um, so anyway, um, decide where you're gonna do your homework. If you have to switch it around, I know families um, in our neighborhood that I see walking have already started in one area and have moved to different areas. And so know that this can be evolving a little bit, especially the longer that we stay in this situation. Um, exercise, oh my goodness. I. I am the kind of person that loves to just power through. Like, we're going to just do every subject. We're going to be done and we're just going to be done. And my kids are like, eyes roll back after about an hour and they're like, I can't take anymore. And, um, and so, yeah, you just, the kids need to exercise. You need to exercise. I'm a much better mom when I exercise. And so, um, run around, walk the dogs, um, play soccer, basketball. My son has even come up with a new game. He chalks the, um, our driveway out there and he has to go around the world, uh, you know, three times and he lets the girls just go once. And if he can't make it around three times when they go once, then, you know, they win. Um, we also did chalk driveway with exercises. So I would, I would do nine little stations and we would do three. So an arm, arm exercise, a leg exercise and a core exercise. And I would just rotate that three times and I would set the timer and we would all get in and do our little exercises. And when the timer went off for 30 seconds, we would rotate. Um, and so that was great fun because in 30 seconds, you know, my youngest daughter might do 10 jumping jacks, but my son might do 35. And so um, it was great because you just had the 30 seconds and then you were rotating. So that was kind of fun. And you can keep your distance if your driveway is big. You can keep your distance from each other. Um, but the reason my little puppy is on um, the screen is because um, on rainy days, he is a terror because he doesn't get walked enough. And so we realized, oh, let's just get a jump rope and somebody is assigned to walking the dog with the jump rope because he'll run behind them and drag, drag himself behind him. Um, 
on rainy days. And so they just walk around the house and they have to do it for 10,000 steps. I mean, a thousand, sorry, not 10,000, a thousand steps so that he is a nice little dog for the rest of the day. Um, and so I have been known to take down one of the mattresses when there were multiple rainy days and just put it on the floor and let my kids just jump on them when they were smaller because I was like, y'all just need to get some exercise. So get creative in that, but make sure the one thing I would caution you about is um, set a timer. So if you're going to exercise for 15 minutes, set a timer because what I've noticed about my kids is once they walk away from the schoolwork, it's hard to get them back if there's not some sort of bell ringing or timer going off. So um, that's my word of caution to y'all. Okay, the first week, there were snacks, 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 more snacks. They, they just ate their way through everything that we had bought at the grocery store. So I realized, oh, we need to set in place just like they have it at school. We eat, you know, we eat our breakfast. We have our 10 o'clock snack. We have our lunch and we have our three o'clock snack because th they were just eating all day long. And so this is a good way for them to stay on schedule, especially if they go back to school. Um, but also they don't eat you out of house and home if they don't develop like eating habits out of eating out of boredom. And so this is just a good way um, to remind them about that. Um, and so, and it's worked, it's worked really well. Each of my kids has a basket of, with their food and some snacks. And so um, they know that, hey, during snack time, this is, this is where you choose from or you can go get some fresh fruit um, or vegetables. All right. Create variety. That was my second topic because there are a lot of things um, that you have to do over and over and over in order for them to learn to memorize things. And so, um, so if they're learning their letters, um, I would do printouts with the letter on them and we would color them and then we would, I found some that had um, lines at the bottom and so you could practice with that particular letter. Um, we'd chalk them on the driveway. The, bet, the most fun they ever had was um, I would take uh, like pizza pans or cookie sheets and I would put a little bit of shaving cream and they would write their letters in shaving cream with their fingers and then, you know, of course it got up to their elbows, but they had so much fun and it's such a physical thing. Um, so it's a, just a nice variety of writing your letters and um, it's great for a lot of kids who don't necessarily have um, fine motor skills in the beginning and so they, they're developing fine motor skills. Um, also, I know friends that have, I never wanted the rice filled in my house. And so uh, they would take a fairly large bucket of rice and then they would let their kids draw in rice or beans. Okay. It's just that physical contact for a lot of learners. Um, it's just super, super helpful. Okay. So then they've learned their letters and they need to know the letter sound. And so I show, there's a picture on the screen with um, nine cards out. And so we would play like a tic-tac-toe game. So I would say, you know, the sound is like for P and not, not tell them the letter, just say the sound. And then I get, if they can't guess it, I get to put like, if I'm zeros or O's, I get to put an O, I flip it over, I put an O there and I get that square. And so if they guess it though, they get to put an X there and then they get to say the sound for me. So then they get to do one. And so you trade back and forth. And um, those were just, just fun games. And then once you wipe out those nine, you play, you know, we play the next time. So you just play three or four rounds until you go through the whole alphabet. Um, it was just another way, instead of just sitting there flashing cards, you know, for 20 minutes um, and them, you know, leaning back on the couch and not really paying attention. Um, it was just another way to get them engaged um, of playing. We also would make a trail down at the bottom. There's like a trail of letters and I would just make this trail around the house and they would hop to the letter and they got to pick it up if they guessed the sound correctly. Um, and so they could learn to collect them um, that way. And so it was another, another physical way to get them up and going and them have a little bit more fun when they're saying the letters. Okay, math facts. Um, none of my kids have enjoyed learning their math facts and so we have gotten creative with it. And so we did, we chalked our driveway. There's a circle in the middle of the uh, screen where we chalked our driveway with one through 19. I miscounted and we should have done one through 20, but anyway. Um, so do one through 20 in a circle, big circle, and um, it's on my uh, website, how to make it. And I would just call it math facts. And then Gracie had to run to whatever number was the answer. And so she had so much fun. We had so much fun that day that um, my high school daughter came out to play. And so I gave her more complicated facts. And then my neighbor, 
and her daughter who was in college came over to play and so I gave them both math facts too and, and more complicated like like um, you know very complicated math um, the hardest part was making sure the answer was less than 20 but it was fun and they stayed and they did it and Gracie wanted to do it again the next day and so that was a win for me um, hopscotch is the same thing make a crazy long hopscotch you can even let them draw it go up to like 30 40 50 Gracie has gone all the way in front of her house and she's gotten up to 50 you can make it touch three um, all kinds of you know different varieties and then also so you hop hopscotch to the answer you know you just hop to the answer um, and then the the less successful but it also gives your children insight into how their behavior can affect other people is um, having an older child show math facts to a younger child and so it's kind of a teaching element that they are also learning but it also shows them like when the younger child is not necessarily paying attention they're like I can't believe they're not paying attention and I'm like, hmm, that happens to me a lot. I don't know. So it gives them some insight into how it is when I'm doing the flashcards with them. So that was really funny too, to hear my son go, she's not paying attention. And I was like, yeah, you don't pay attention when I do it. So, okay, there we are. Um, spelling. Spelling was really fun. If you have Scrabble tiles or Bananagram tiles, it's a little game. Um, it, it takes the... Um, writing and penmanship away from a lot of kids who are struggling with their fine motor skills. And so they can quickly gather those tiles up and put them in a line and spell the word. And, um, and it, it felt like a game to my kids. Um, some of you guys have the magnet letters on your refrigerators. Um, those were great. Um, and then we did a lot of spelling outside on the sidewalk with sidewalk chalk. chalk. So um, Definitely change it up, especially those things you have to do over and over and over until they learn it, because these are all very important things that they have to learn. And so if you, if they don't get them down to where they're like second nature, they'll struggle later on, um, you know, with math and reading. Um, and also we, we would take, so change where you have school. Sometimes we would take all of our books outside and we'd sit on the patio and we'd have school out there on a nice day or um, take them and make a picnic in the living room and have school on the picnic um, blanket for the day. And so uh, just change it up because uh, doing the same thing over and over and over, although it may feel efficient, um, it doesn't necessarily um, want them want to learn more. So um, then um, let the kids take ownership. Um, we sat our kids down. Our kids are probably a little bit older than some, but we sat them down and we were like, um, this is the situation to the best of our ability without trying to scare them terribly. But we showed them like, you know, dad's business has gone down. Um, we are all living here for at least a month. Um, we need to get along to the best of our ability. There are chores that need to be done. Your schoolwork needs to be done. We both, me and my husband both have jobs. And uh, we still are having to do those jobs in, you know, in the gaps. And, um, and this is what the grocery store looks like. So um, I actually took a picture when I was in there of the shelves and they were very, very empty. Um, and so it just gave my kids a really good idea of like, oh, we're kind of in this together and this is what we need to do together. And so, um, so we just made the list of what we needed to get done. We also brainstormed uh, with them, especially when they were younger, like, um, like what would you like to do when you're done with school? Like now here's some things we can do and um, what would you like to do? And so um, we did, we tried to do at least one of those things after we got done with school is kind of like a bonus, like that was your reward for doing it. Um, and then here is a block calendar that um, this is the kind of thing that we use now. I wanted to just show y'all real quickly what it looks like for me. Um, this is more um, of what I use now. So we have this, this area of things that they ha we have to get done, like these are have to's. And then these are the things that we want to get done. Um, and so they know, we've talked about like, hey guys, the, you know, these things on this side have to get checked off before we move over to this side. And, um, and they've just been, they've just been troopers. And I think um, most kids will be, um, they kind of understand the, I can't get back to my thing. Hang on just, um, I think they, they get a sense of what's going on. And um, 
kids are just amazing. My kids in class just always impress me of what they can do and what they're willing to do. Um, so when, when you give them their list, just mark or highlight some of the items that need to be done first, like math for some of my kids just need to be done first. They, they were fresh. Um, they need to be done. So you guys decide what is probably the hardest thing for them that probably needs to be done first when they have the most energy. Um, and then give them a grouping of things like, I don't even know what subjects, you know, some of your kids have, but let's just say grammar and literature and history. I don't really care which order you do them in. You choose the order. And so that gives them a little uh, control that they, they, my kids have always liked. Um, and then I had, um, I had kids that wanted to get ahead. And so they were like, I, I have two hours um, tonight. And so I would like to do some of my homework for tomorrow. I'm like, great, let's do it. Um, and then I have my 5 a.m. riser. And so I just make sure that I go to bed early enough so that I can get up with her and that I can work. And honestly, she can get done with probably half her homework before anybody else even wakes up. And so, you know, it's quiet and it's good for her and it's good for me. And um, as long as I go to bed early enough. So that's just something to think about. Like, when are they in their prime and can you work with them? Um, can you also think of things that they can do on their own? Um, in their room, um, in the living room, when you have to do your job, um, because I know a lot of people work. And so, you know, can we have storybook hour? I used to sit my daughter on the couch and I was like, don't get off the couch unless you have to go to the bathroom for one hour. And here is your stack of books. And I literally would give her a ton of books. I'm like, you may look at all these books, but you cannot get off the couch until, you know, an hour is done. And I would set the timer so she knew, okay, the end is coming. So um, yeah, you guys decide what, playing with Legos, whatever it is that you guys have that they really like. Um, and I would change that up too. Like, hey, this time we're gonna do something different. So, um, so that don't, they don't get bored. The, the key for me has always been to not let them go until they don't, they're done playing with it, is to do a certain amount of time and then do a slight takeaway and like, hey, we can do this again tomorrow or we can do this again next week um, so that they don't get totally bored with doing the same thing all the time. Um, and the last time, the last thing, um, you will come to the end of your patience. Um, and you just need to pause and take a break. Um, you need to remember that, um, y'all are all on the same team, that this is really hard for them too, that you love and need each other. And, um, I've often had to apologize to my kids for either yelling or shaming them. Um, and, uh, just with a heartfelt, like I wanted something so badly and I was tired of working with you with your schoolwork that I was willing to shame you or yell at you and I'm really sorry I should not have done that it's not this is not your fault okay it is stressful for everyone but this is not your fault and so um, just asking them too if they could hey if we can be diligent in this work um, then we can get through it quicker um, so sometimes you just have to start over and sometimes it's in the middle of your school sometimes it's the very beginning of your school day and sometimes you just have to start over and go you know what we're going to do something different and tomorrow we will do school again so um anyway i wish you all great luck in this crazy crazy adventure of whatever's happening and um that um i specifically want you guys to know that um it's not easy but you guys can do it Hey, Linda, you're muted still. I said some really important things like this. the lotto numbers. Did y'all not get those? Okay. So um, one of the things that I failed to say early, um, earlier on is Karen started a website just about, what, less than two weeks ago? Yeah. That was, so uh, you can find her at homeplate101.com correct me if I'm wrong. And That's then good. she is new to social media. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting to work with her a little bit. So you can find her on Instagram at home plate underscore 101. If, um, if you, if you just need one more person to follow, uh, tell your friends about her, tell her, tell your friends about her, her website. She um, will also, if I'm right, you'll, you'll link your presentation that you, yeah your handout or, or whatever you, your what's the word I'm looking for your what your your screen that you shared tonight PowerPoint. she'll link that 
your PowerPoint to her website so you can find it there. So, all right, let's see. Does anybody have any questions? Let me see. How do I figure this out? Um, chat, share screen. I keep seeing people. Um, does anybody have any questions? Karen, help me out oh. here. I've only seen. Sadly, I actually unmuted everybody else except myself. Oh, okay, lucky you. <laughs> awesome. so Karen, what I was saying is thank you for addressing different learning styles and having some of that tactile learning. Um, and I also love the idea of putting uh, timers on things because people, we can do about anything if we know that there is a finite time. For example, I think we would all be handling lockdown a lot better if we knew it was on a timer and we had a definite <laughs> end in sight. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, really, that's some really lovely, lovely um, work there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anybody have any questions for her? Yeah. I don't have a question, but I have a comment. Okay. I, don't, I don't have any small children now, but I did homeschool my last child. And I wish I would have thought of that timer idea. I have to admit, what a wonderful thing to have, because it was always hard to get him to go back to work, you know, and get back to his schooling. I wish I would have listened to you a long time ago, because you have some awesome ideas. <laughs> Thank you. Needless to say, homeschooling was wonderful for him, and he's, he's doing well, very well. He went to college and all is well, so you, get, you have some wonderful advice, and I hope some people take you up on it, because it, it really is helpful, for sure. Thank you for your presentation. Oh, sure. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody? Hi, this is Denny. <laughs> oh, hey, Denny. Hi. I don't, I just have a comment. I'm, I'm glad I'm not doing this. <laughs> I'm, I'm just sitting through this. My daughter is kind of having to do this at home now because there's, you know, uh, her six year old is at home and she has a three year old at home. So that's kind of a, that's kind of a challenge. And I know there's been end of your end of my rope days. So I'm hoping to pass on some of this to her. This was really good, Karen. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Anybody else? Good idea, actually. I should pass that information on to my daughter who's having to yeah. homeschool yeah. her children at this time, whether she likes it or not. Right, <laughs> right. I and think I'll definitely yeah. pass that on. She'll she'll be looking at your site now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually, Karen, I have passed your site on to a few people because I know, you know, there's a lot of people that are all of a sudden wind up trying to work and be a stay-at-home teacher as well. And nobody was prepared for this. It was just like, oh, guess what else you get to do now, too? And so any help that we can give both the teachers and the parents, I think, you know, will be doubly welcome. Because no one was set up for this. It was like, guess what you get to do now? It's like, oh, yeah. crap. You're okay. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? I just All right. Say, no, that was really good. So next, yeah, um, they're the greatest friends. I just, I'm, I, I get to sit here and be proud that you know. I, I, I sit, sometimes I sit there and go, I picked her and her and her and him, and and they're like quality people. And so when I get to introduce them to other people, they just make me proud to. To, to know that you know they're in my my list of people that I call when I when I get in trouble and I need somebody to walk me down or walk me through something. So okay, so Karen, thank you very much. Yay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so next week, Erin, will you wave real quick? So Erin is um, I always get in trouble because I don't know how to describe her because what I want to say yeah. There's a freak show that like hauls your camera shit around and will haul you up and make you back down. <laughs> Somebody's got a little mute back there. I, t I took everyone off mute, but if you want to refer to me as Captain, that's also fine. Um, I'm a Star Trek fan. So, yeah. Okay, so Aaron and, uh, and I met, I'll tell the story over and over because it's a great story. But I met her on a plane, and I, I'm, I'm notorious for getting on a plane and falling asleep immediately because I live that kind of life. And I wake up to this noise of this woman being very agitated. And she 
is on the phone and apparently she has missed a flight. And I'm kind of like, oh, this poor lady. And at some point I say, you know, I hope it all works out. Where are you going? And she's like, I'm going to Frankfurt. And I'm like, oh, what airline? Turns out we're on the same flight. And me, her, and her husband are running down the terminals in Houston um, International um, Airport. And we get there, the plane's still there, people are standing around, we start chatting. And um, she's like, hey, are you on Facebook? Because we should get together when we get back from our respective trips. I'm like, no, I am, but I told her no. And I said, but I'm on Instagram. She's like, great, I'm on Instagram. So we, we load up, we follow each other, and we have one person in common. And you're just kind of like, the world just got small to this one person. And she gives me her, her contact card, her business card. And I look at it and it says, you know, warrior that gets shit done. Who puts that on our card that gives and gives it to strangers but my friend Erin. And she is a problem solver. She, there is nothing that I've asked her that she won't say yes to, um, which is a great challenge for me. But it also allows me to do a lot of stuff that I want to do. And um, one of the first things that we did, I told her, I said, you know, I'm not a hiker, I'm not a camper but I really want to climb or hike to the, to the lighthouse, which is in Paladero Canyon. She's like, let's do it. And I'm like, can you get me up? Cause I want to take a picture of it at sunrise. She goes, I will get you up and I'll get you down. We will be, we'll get down safely. And we'll, we'll make a great, we'll, we'll make a great weekend out of it. So she basically drove me there and set up our camp. And at, she's like the night before she says, it's, we're gonna get up at five. We need to be on the trail at 5.30. And I'm like, 5.30 AM? What have I signed up for? But those are the things you have to do to get the things that you want uh, accomplished. And Erin is a, a personal coach, a professional um, that will sit there and walk through, what do you want? How do you want to accomplish it? And she's a person that can kind of help you get started. And that's what I think a lot of people um, have a problem with. They, they know they want to do something and they know their idea is great. They just don't know how to get started. So let me introduce you to Erin. And Erin is offering a um, hour consultation with anybody that, anybody. So if you aren't interested, but you know somebody that's struggling, send them to Erin. And um, please let them know that she'll be speaking next Wednesday. Uh -huh. And one of the things, because we are all photographers, at least that's my interest, She's going to tweak her presentation a little bit to dress photographers. You know, why do you take the pictures you take? What are you trying to, to, to relay to somebody, your, your viewer? So those are some things that I'm hoping that she'll touch on next week. So did I miss anything, Erin? No, in fact, you hit it pretty much spot on. Um, I want to talk to you about what, you know, how are you connecting with the people that, uh, that are viewing uh, what you photograph? Um, what questions are you trying to answer uh, with your camera? Because yeah. powerful questions are really how we connect with people and our world at large. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that's why when I look at the screen, very few of you are people that I, I mean, I, other than Michelle, who is related to me, and Karen, who I've known for a lot of years, the rest of you I've met probably through Instagram. Uh, Akshaya, I, you know, met through another friend who she asked to take photos of her for her blog on her website. And so photography, we're connected. And even though I'm shooting, I like to shoot flowers and landscapes, Akshaya is shooting food and she does cooking online and stuff. So photography, taking a photo of food, you have to make that appealing. How do you get someone to go, that doesn't just look good, I want to make that. And that's something that it touches everybody in a, in a different way. And I know that um, Faryal is here. She's, you can't see her, but I met her in August or September with another group of ladies. And I said, hey, let's go to Brazos Bend. It's August. It's hot. It's humid. The mosquitoes are going to be really huge, but let's go. She was one of the ladies that showed up, as well as Sue. And we met through Instagram. Uh, because of photos and that's how you get linked up and all of a sudden these are people that I, I don't talk to them every day but I do chat with them more than I ever thought I would and and, and it's really small Ruth you can't see Ruth in the corner Ruth is a 
wildlife photographer, specifically birds that I, I, she does everything, but I associate her with birds because I just now started with wildlife photography and birds are the hardest thing I have ever photographed <laughs> right next to children, people that look back, but birds are right up there. And I have- Can I say lilac crested roller? Yeah, lilac crested roller, yes, yes. <laughs> It is the most beautiful bird I've ever seen. Yeah, so Erin uh, just recently was in Tanzania. So she sends me a picture and says, you would love this. And I'm like, I know, I know, one day. I'm not ready for Africa yet. But, but I'll go and I'll carry your shit when we go, do. Yeah, well, stand in line. A lot of people want to go with me to Africa. But Ruth, you know, I happen to be in South Texas. She's down in the valley. And I was in the mining lane, and I said, you know, Blaine, do you mind, this lady has a, an exhibit. Do you mind if I just call her and see where it is, and maybe we can go check it out? And I called Ruth, and she's like, hey, I'm at the ranch. Why don't you come out? And I'm like, okay, who does that? And then all the <laughs> people, who's getting in there? But photography does bring people together. And I mean, as I, I look at you guys here, and Michelle's going to go back and go, I met Linda's Instagram friends. It's true. It, you know, it's kind of like with Dirk. Um, Dirk and I wouldn't have anything in common other than he takes the most amazing astrophotography photos. And I remember seeing a photo of the Milky Way over, um, not even, it was the coast, but Galveston. And I'm thinking, you can't see the Milky Way there. And he's like, yes, you can. Come down here, let's go shoot. And <laughs> I, I drove down to Galveston to meet a stranger. And I, he, I, I considered him a very, very close friend. And, you know, those are things that my, when I get to tick things off in my little, I want to do these things, I'm looking at these faces. And a lot of you have stepped up and you've introduced me to things that I didn't know that I, would be doing much less could accomplish so i i appreciate that and and i'm rambling so aaron's going to cut me off in two seconds but i wanted to thank you guys for showing up because i know a, a bunch of you don't have children and um but you know somebody that does and you're going to wish that they had signed up to, to watch this but tell your friends because the more people we can get on here yeah but what karen was talking about works not just for uh, children, but also a lot of this works for adults, for us as well. Like, hey, you guys, I'm gonna spend 15 minutes doing this thing that I really don't wanna do, but it's just 15 minutes, I can knock it out. So what Karen was talking about was relevant, not just to teaching you know, children home, but for all of us to get through our day. So well done, Karen. Like I should be folding well laundry, done. is that what you're saying? I should get that, <laughs> takes 15 minutes? So if you come spray paint or spray my house, I'll do your laundry. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> what Aaron what Aaron is uh, uh, referring to is I recently decided to um, pressure wash my house um, because that's what you do in in quarantine. I've been pressure washing my house. I've stained my deck. There was a point where I could not raise my arms last week. Like I could not lift them up higher than this. They, they still hurt. But um, everybody has to cope in their different way. And I, I appreciate you guys taking the time to, to spend an hour with, with me and the people I uh, have, have drawn together. So thank y'all. So, all right. I'm going to turn off the recording function. Um, and we can just stop and chat here if everybody wants.